Good morning, everybody. Or at least I hope I'm saying good morning to you all in Harrowweald. Uh, hi, I'm Father John. I'm the vicar of the Parish of All Saints, uh, Harrowweald. We're part of the Diocese of London and uh, within the Church of England, which is celebrating great things uh, this week. We have a new Archbishop of York, Archbishop Stephen, uh, formerly Bishop of Chelmsford, and right now our Synod is meeting, showing that despite COVID-19, we keep going. We keep going worshipping God and we keep going making sure that our churches will be ready whenever we're able to return to them for worship. We are still worshipping uh, uh, in our homes at All Saints. Uh, right now my home is a holiday home in Tenerife and that's why I say I hope that the um, the technology and the internet will be strong enough for us to be able to worship together. Uh, God willing, we'll start at around 10 o'clock with the service of Eucharist with hymns and as we prepare for worship, we'll listen to some beautiful music uh, which uh, one of our congregation, Mandy Whitfield, has just shared. It's a beautiful interpretation of Ubi Caritas. Let's see if we can repeat. Hello again and thank you Mandy for sharing that beautiful music, a wonderful way to prepare for our worship this morning. Now let's see if everything will work because 
We are here to worship God. And so I greet you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. As we come to worship God, let's pray together our bidding prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's remember our imperfections in the sight of Almighty God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all we can confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria in excelsis. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now let us pray. Our collect for this the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might. The author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Our first reading today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, some verses from the 55th chapter, wonderful verses where uh, the prophet confirms the goodness and perfection of God in creation. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars, the myrtles will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, 
for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we will test the power of technology again. We're going to, uh, God willing, we will have two hymns and for backing, given where we are and the realities, we're going to try to use the recorded music of the choir and musicians of St. Martin's in the Field. And so our first hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. The Lord be with you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have to say, it really is quite disconcerting 
reading the Holy Gospel and seeing messages coming that tell you that uh, the connection has gone, the connection is coming back again. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, reading. I hope that you're at least able to see it and to hear most of it. Uh, for our text this morning, blessed are your ears be Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. One of the wonderful parables of Jesus. Parables takes me back to my very first school, junior school, Great Stainton, Church of England, junior mixed and infants, ten of us, with one head teacher, Mrs. Hill, whose word was law. And we started every day with, uh, with hymns and prayers and quite often a story with a meaning. And Mrs Hill told us that the best definition of a parable is that it is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. One of those things that has stayed with me ever since is a lot has stayed with me from Great State and School. Um, it just shows the importance of good beginnings. And that's what's going on here in our parable about good beginnings. We have the, the sower, the farmer, going out and sowing. And we're told that the seed went in different places. Again, another memory from uh, being little. Uh, I could never understand why the disciples asked Jesus to, uh, to explain this particular parable. Because for me, it was clear as day, having been born on the farm and grown up and seeing how carefully we prepared the land and how we wouldn't dream of putting seed in the hedge back or where there are stones. We would... The seed was precious. We would only ever put it where there was, well, it wasn't, it wasn't very fertile soil, but it was as good as we had on the farm. We were always very careful to put the seed in the right place. And Jesus was saying that the seed goes in all sorts of places and sometimes it doesn't grow at all and sometimes it grows quickly and then withers, but what we should be looking for is seed which grows well and which yields well. And he talked about it growing 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Again, it's another memory from the farm. The one seed of wheat that went in, I sometimes uh, rub the, um, the little grains out of the ear to count how many there were, particularly when it was getting close to ripe, being ripe. And, yeah, it's... 15, 20, if it was a good head, 25. So how on earth do you get up to 100? Well, they're not super heads. It's when you look down at that single grain that was planted, if it's a good one, it will have tillered. And there'll be not one stalk coming up with an ear. There could be three or four, each with 15, 20, 30 seeds. And in total reaching a hundred. What's that got to do with us and our text? Blessed are your eyes because they see because they see and your ears because they hear. Well, we are the seed and what we yield doesn't just depend on what comes directly from us. We can create tillers, other plants which grow and which will either grow well or grow badly, depending on how they're cared for and how they're looked after. And Jesus said it's all down to not just seeing, but perceiving. And so it's not just down to hearing, it's all about understanding. There are different levels and the different levels relate directly to the type of soil in which those seeds fall. Now, I said that uh, I never had problems understanding that parable. I always thought it was 
it was dead simple to understand. But I'll tell a story against myself to prove that even when we hear and understand, even when we see and perceive, it's still possible to make mistakes. And it's, a, it's another story from being a little boy on the farm. And for the very first year, having my own tiny corner of the garden that could be mine to plant. And I don't know how, but I got hold of some radish seeds. They must have been spare uh, when my parents had finished planting their things in the garden. I don't know. I was very small. And I, planned, I prepared my soil. I made sure it was good soil. And no doubt I cleared the stones and there would be, there would be no thorns where it was planted. It was beautifully tilled and prepared. And I, as I remember, I think I even used my spade, which I used to take to the seaside every year on the summer holidays to dig in the sand. So it was well dug as well. Okay, let's cut the long story short. Of course, as a little boy, I did not have patience for the radish to grow naturally. I was out every morning to see it, and eventually, it seemed after about 10 years, the first ones came through, it was probably three or four days. But they were growing so slowly. And then, of course, the eyes that see and the ears that hear, the eyes that see but do not perceive, and the ears that hear but do not understand, remembered seeing my uncles going out onto the fields, to the fields of wheat and, and the grass as well, and spreading fertiliser on that with those little white uh, balls, which all of a sudden made everything grow really well. And so I went and I found a bag that was open, and I think I even believe it was my bucket from Red Car, which I filled with uh, fertiliser and cane, and I must have given that radish such a high dosage of fertiliser. The poor things, after that, they grew for the sky, and they grew and grew, and they went yellow. I put far too much fertiliser on. I didn't understand. I'd seen, but I didn't perceive. And the result was an absolute disaster. They grew fast, just like the poor ones that the poor seeds that were growing on the thin soil. And there was no harvest at all. It was all up in the air. There was nothing underneath. So where is this leading us? It's leading us to hopefully understand that God gives us all gifts and will help us all to understand if we will really listen. He will help us to really see and perceive if we will take time to concentrate. And why is that important? Because Jesus showed that we are not here living on this earth just to have a good time and to take care of us. He cared for everybody he met. He shared the good news and gave us the challenge to continue it. In our text, he blessed the disciples because they could see and they could hear. But with that came a responsibility. Having seen and understood, having heard and and perceive, they then had to share the news so that their seed could yield maybe 30-fold, maybe 60-fold, maybe 100-fold. And so it is for us. Yes, it's a simple parable, maybe. Yes, it's most certainly an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And most definitely, there is a message for us within it. Blessed are our eyes because we see. Blessed are our ears because we hear. Let us thank God for those gifts and use them for him. Amen. And now let's confess our faith in Almighty God with the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we worship you this morning, we pray that we may be both good seed and that we may grow in good land. May we share your good news. May we see with our eyes and hear with our ears and share all that we see and all that we hear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we give you thanks for our church, the Church of England, and we pray for Archbishop Stephen as he begins his new responsibility and privilege as Archbishop of York. We pray for our two Archbishops, Justin and Stephen, at this time of great uncertainty and change. We ask for your blessing upon the meeting of our General Synod at this time as they consider how best we can continue to serve your people during this time of coronavirus and beyond. Lord, give inspiration to those who will speak and may your spirit support and guide those who will make decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray now for Archbishop John Sentamu and for his wife as they begin the next stage of their lives in your service. We thank you for his inspirational guidance over these last years and for his example leading by doing. May we learn from all that he showed us and may we share it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for those who continue to be affected by coronavirus. We pray for those who are working in hospitals and in care homes and in research laboratories all doing what they can to care for those who are sick and to protect us now and in the future. Lord, may they feel your support. May they feel your healing presence surrounding them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we turn to our personal prayers and we share with you our own cares and reasons for thanksgiving. We remember those who we know and love who particularly need your support, the comfort of your Holy Spirit at this time. In our parish list, we continue to pray for Margaret Vinter, for Jane Slade, for Angela Kidd, for Claire Rording, for Emma Foss, for Doug Garrett, for Laura Baker, and for Janice Glasser. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, in these prayers, we remember those who are no longer with us, but who showed us how to see and hear properly and how to share your good news. We thank you for their example. We pray that their rest with you may be eternal. We pray that we may show in our lives all that we have learned from their example. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, my own peace I give you, a peace such as the world cannot give. That is my gift for you. The peace of God be always with you and also with you. I wave you a sign of peace. Ella, peace be with you. And now we will prepare the table for the Eucharist. I am going to try to move the laptop. So I hope we keep the connection. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father. Through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and of wine may be to us his body and his blood.
who in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace. And now I invite you to say the prayer of the act of spiritual communion and on behalf of the whole congregation, Ellen and I will take Let us pray. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. 
in these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. And now, let's see if we can make the system work again for our closing hymn. Another hymn with the music and the singing led by the choir and musicians of the Church of St. Martin's, St. Martin in the Fields in Trafalgar Square. I hope it will be lovely. The Lord be with you. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love wherever they are, today and always. Well, I heard myself from the beginning to the end. I really hope that uh, all of it was uh, reached wherever you are. And I saw David and Sabine who are there from Ghana, a lot of people joining us from the parish and beyond. Wherever you are, I hope that you're all keeping well and that everything is going well for you. Um, we will be having our usual
coffee corner, let's see, yeah, straight after the service. Uh, it's exactly the same login as you've always been using, including, I hope that the ladies had a, a good ladies night last week. Uh, we've been away, we haven't heard anything. But it's the same Zoom login for um, coffee, if you, virtual coffee together after the service, if you want to. Um, Ella and I are away for another couple of days, we're back on Tuesday, and once we're back, then uh, live stream worship will resume and we'll be no I'll put notices in uh, Facebook uh, when the first service will, will be and what type of service they will be. Um, but most important, I hope that all is going well with you. As I mentioned, um, Bishop Stephen took over from uh, uh, took over as Archbishop Stephen from Archbishop John during this week. You may have seen it on the news, so please. Do hold uh, Archbishop Stephen in your prayers at this time of great change and great uncertainty within our church. You know, we with the uh, Church Warden Standing Committee and PCC are looking at uh, the reality for us to restart worship in All Saints as soon as possible. We're sharing, we, every church has to prepare what's called a risk assessment. A draft of that has been circulated to the PCC for comments. It basically says that all that we'll have to do and all that we'll have to take care of when we do return to church. And once we've completed that, then we will make some firm plans for meeting together, not just virtually, but in reality as well. And one idea that we're, we're looking at to try to meet together more quickly than in church is to possibly have one or two services in the Vicarage Garden in August. Uh, we look, and again, we'll need to have a risk assessment for that. Um, and Bishop Pete has given us his blessing for us to explore what we can do when, without any feeling that we are being pushed to do anything. So let's trust God and let's use our resources to continue to worship God as we can. Um, we, for now, we have live stream. The church, of course, is still open on Tuesdays and Saturdays for now, if you wish to go in for private prayer and just to see our beautiful church. And whenever we're able, we will return for our worship as well. So I think those are all the notices that I've got from so far away. I'm very conscious, though, that you haven't been charged to prepare for the, uh, the coming week. So wherever you're going to be, Whatever you're going to be doing, whoever you're going to be with, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So, Ella and I leave you for now. We'll look in on you in the coffee corner just to say hi. Um, but as we conclude our worship, we'll finish with another uh, song led by the uh, the choir of uh, St. Martin's in the Field, and uh, it's a beautiful uh, uh, reflection, Veni Sancte Spiritus. Hi. 